Well, it's that time of year again. We are now 33 days away from the deadline to file your 2021 taxes. Full disclaimer, I'm not an accountant, nor am I providing any tax advice. But what I am going to do is mention 10 situations where there could be a possible tax deduction. Hence, these are a few good pointers to speak with your tax professional about. First one, number one, using retirement account for your down payment. If you have an IRA or a 401k account, you might be able to tap into those funds to help you buy a home. If you have a traditional IRA, you can withdraw up to $10,000 from the account to buy the home without incurring that 10% early withdrawal penalty, even if you're younger than 59 and a half. If you're married, each spouse can withdraw $10,000 from each respective account of their IRAs without having to pay that penalty. Remember, to qualify as a first-time home buyer, you and your spouse cannot have owned a home in the past two years. However, even though you escaped that penalty from Uncle Sam, you're still required to pay the tax on the amount you withdraw. Now, with a Roth IRA, you can withdraw your contributions at any time and for any reason without facing a tax or penalty. Uncle Sam has already gotten paid their cut, so there's nothing for them to get. You can withdraw up to $10,000 in earnings before the age of 59 and a half to buy your first home without having to be hit with that 10% penalty for early withdrawals. Now, if you want to withdraw money from a 401k account uh, to put down towards your down payment, well, that's a little different. You'll have to borrow money from the plan. Um, you can typically take out a tax and penalty free loan from your 401k plan for usually up to about half of the available balance. Speak to your, your plan administrator about that one. Uh, number two, mortgage point deduction. In some cases, a buyer can pay points to a lender when you take out a mortgage. In most cases, these points that you pay in a loan to buy the home are fully deductible in the year that you pay them. Um, there are some requirements that must be satisfied, such as the loan must be secured by your primary home. Uh, number three, um, mortgage insurance premium deduction. Uh, if your down payment was less than 20%, you're likely paying PMI, private mortgage insurance. For 2021 tax returns, homeowners who paid PMI last year uh, for loans originating after 2006 can deduct their premiums if they itemize. Now, PMI, remember, is usually charged when you put uh, less than 20% down when you purchase your home. Number four, mortgage interest deduction. Now, this is typically the biggest tax break from owning a home. If you itemize your tax return, uh, you may be able to deduct up to $750,000 of debt. debt. Now, the period in which you purchase your home will determine your deduction, what your deduction may be. Um, again, this is something that you'd want to address with your tax professional. Uh, number five, mortgage interest credit. In addition to mortgage interest deduction, there's also a mortgage interest tax credit that could be available to lower income homeowners who had issued a qualified mortgage, uh, mortgage credit certificate, MCC, uh, from the state or local government that subsidized the purchase of the home. Uh, number six, my deduction, the home office expense deduction. You know, as a result of COVID-19, many of us found ourselves working from home. If you're self-employed and work from home, you might be able to deduct expenses uh, for the business use of your home. Now, the, the home deduction, the home office deduction is available to homeowners and renters. And it doesn't matter what type of home you have. It could be a single family, a, a townhouse, an apartment, a condo. Um, you may also be able to claim the deduction if you work on a structure on your property, such as a detached garage or an ADU. Um, the key to the home office deduction is that you're using uh, the part of your home regularly and exclusively for your money-making endeavor. Um, it has to be dedicated in office. Um, number seven, credit for energy, saving and pr energy savings improvements. Now, you can receive um, a tax credit if you install certain energy-efficient equipment in your home, like uh, solar panels or wind turbines. Uh, eight, number eight, deduction on medically necessary home improvements. A homeowner can qualify for a medical expense deduction if you install special equipment in or make modifications to your home for medical reasons. Common examples uh, could be upgrades to a home that could be ramps or widening doorways, chair lifts, uh, or even grading the ground to make it a little bit easier to get into the home. Uh, number nine, property tax deduction. 
Now, as a homeowner, one of the additional taxes that you're going to have to get used to paying is your local real estate property tax. Now, the good news is that you might be able to you might be able to deduct the state and local property taxes that you pay on your federal income tax return. Last but not least, number 10, your capital gains exclusion when selling your home. If you're married and you file a joint tax return, you don't have to pay taxes on up to $500,000 of the gain from the sale of your home. Now that number is $250,000 for individuals. There are certain restrictions on this, but this is a perfect opportunity for you to talk to your trusted tax advisor about this. Thank you for watching. Happy tax season.